I battle an incurable disease every day. It empowers me to help people like you tap into your full potential. There you go. Oh, yeah, that's a burn. I want everyone to have the tools and the right mindset to be the best version of themselves. Nutrition, exercise, inspirational stories to motivate and educate you. I'm Peter Nielsen, and I'm your personal life coach. I'm excited to share this next half hour with you. My objective is pretty simple. I want to accomplish two things. First, I want to ignite a fire on the inside for you to believe again, for you to truly be a better version of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. Number two is I want to educate you on proper nutrition so you could feel good from the inside out. What a concept. I also want to incorporate proper exercise so you can have more quality in your life. Do the things with the people that you love. But before we go there, I want to spend a moment or two to allow you into my life, to learn how I got here, what gets me up in the morning, and my reasons why. I was diagnosed um, at the age of 15 with an uncurable disease called Crohn's disease. And for people that don't know, it's like having the stomach flu every day for the rest of your life. It took our, our life and, and sucked it inside out for a while. I think that was the first test of my life that, um, that was trying to steal my childhood. My spirit was tested, my will was tested, um, my manhood was tested. And I was angry. It was like, why me? I started to work out and won 50 bodybuilding championships, including Mr. International Universe. But I knew I had another purpose, to help people. I knew there was something bigger and better and stronger than me. And I just followed that. If you want to stay fit for the game of basketball, you need to think the word plyometrics. Plyometrics is an explosive movement. What they're doing is going from side to side with a box or a step. And it's really great for the games of basketball, hockey, soccer, when you need to go from- My life was so amazing. And the disease seemed to take a back seat. But then I had a flare up. My doctor told me my intestines was so blocked I wouldn't live past two weeks if I didn't have surgery. After the surgery, life seemed to be normal. Then one night, a couple of months later, I was having severe pain. I collapsed. My heart stopped for 43 seconds. I had another blockage. I was again on the brink of death. When you're dying, you know it. Life is being sucked out of you like I've never experienced, nor do I want to in my life. I was in a coma, and I woke up four days later. I woke up with a softer heart. I went from my 196 pounds, you know, down to 149 pounds within a week. I couldn't climb 11 stairs up to my master bedroom for three weeks. It put me in another stratosphere on being on fire to try to change the way the world looks at taking care of their body, taking care of their temple, finding their purpose. Yay, man. Fantastic. Good job. That was amazing. One of the most powerful things anyone could ever do is have a mind shift. You could buy all the latest and greatest fitness attire at a sporting goods store. You could go through the motions, know the mumbo jumbo, but if you don't have a changed heart that you're gonna dedicate how you eat at the breakfast, lunch, and dinner table that you're gonna put in the sweat equity, it's not gonna happen. Peter, you know, it's uh, such a pleasure to be on your show because You've been an inspiration to so many people. When I was 15 years old and I was first diagnosed, I had two choices. I was either going to be the victim or I was going to try to become the victor. 
And again, that mindset, that, that heart of a lion needed to click in. And I will say this, we all have that within us. If you truly don't believe that you're going to win on my challenge, if you don't believe that you're going to break a stronghold, if you don't believe you're going to reconcile on a marriage, you're not. But I believe if we take these obstacles and we grow, even if it's painful. When I was younger, I was molested by my father. And I, I felt like I... Um, had to eat my way so that people wouldn't come and do it again. Sometimes our lives have to be rearranged and shooken up and we need to be relocated to a place that we're supposed to be. I feel like now I've went past that and I can be beautiful just like everybody else. So your knees are slightly bent, shoulders back, chest out. You blow out on the hardest part of the movement. So as you're coming up, you oxygenate. And then take a deep breath. If someone wants to be the best version of themselves, they need to see it. If someone wants to lose weight, they need to see themselves thin. If someone wants to get healthy and they were diagnosed with a terminal illness, for your body to truly want to heal itself, you need to believe that. 60 to 70% on how you look and how you feel has everything to do with what you put in your mouth. Come up and squeeze. A little more of your knees bent. Good. You really want to be the best version of yourself? It starts from within. There was something in your belly. Some people call it your intuition. Some people call it your gut. I call it your spirit. It will never, ever lie to you. If people think you're crazy on what you want to do, you're probably on the right track of dreaming big because most people don't have the courage to get up, to put one foot in front of the other, and to dream, execute, and implement. My question, part of my purpose, what are you doing with your time? This is not a dress rehearsal. Many times people will say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. I've heard every excuse under the sun on why people don't exercise. Peter, I'm a single mother of four. And what I'll say, if you want it bad enough, you will find a way. If you don't, you will make every excuse under the sun and not get it done. The only way to change is to change. I was raised for this challenge is if you can give it to me. This is what I've been waiting for for the past nine years. If you don't do something, if you don't make a commitment, no matter what help I want to give you, no matter what help the doctors want to give you, no matter what help the nutritionists want to give you, your lovely wife, you're going to die. I'm spending my whole life, part of my mission is to help spark that fire on the inside and ignite an inferno for people to give themselves permission to step out of their comfort zone to become that better version of themselves because we are all planted with seeds of greatness. The second exercise that Rhonda's doing is a walking lunge, and she's doing a great job because you wanna make sure you have good form. Your knees should never go past your toes so you don't hurt your knee joint. No one says it's gonna be easy. One of the best exercises on the planet for your lower body is actually a squat. Are there any benefits really when it comes to chocolate? To strengthen your back, you want to do a Superman stretch. You don't need to know everything. And when you go with that gut, that intuition, I call it your spirit, it will never lie. It will not only tell you the difference between right and wrong, but it will lead you on the steps that you're supposed to be. So I'm on fire to love on this country with Peter Nielsen Life Coaching because that's all I've ever done.
I enjoy working out, but I enjoy even more loving on people, really helping them, taking them through a transformation, whether it's through this television show or on my challenges. I just get tremendous enjoyment to see people win. Recently, I had a challenge and a gentleman really spoke to my heart because I saw this transformation that was mind boggling to me. His name is Bill Miss Kokeman, and his doctor told him the last time that he visited, if you don't do something, you're gonna die. Well, I first noticed uh, when I couldn't climb the stairs in my apartment, um, I had to lease the apartment because I travel for work. So they put me on the third floor of an apartment building and I was carrying up just some small little objects up to my apartment, I was winded, so I couldn't breathe. I was referred over to the cardiologist. Well, the doctor said, uh, if I don't do anything uh, about my current situation, that the only thing I'd be facing is death. I mean, I, I had no choice but to take action. I went online and started looking for videos, and I came across Peter Nielsen's videos online. And I realized that was the, the information that was being provided in those videos was something I can easily do. So I just started watching the videos and took one step at a time and um, started changing my lifestyle. And as I started seeing the weight fall off is when I, I felt motivated enough to go to the next step. And so I realized I had to build this foundation. In order for me to get to the next step, I have to build a, a solid foundation. And I realized I couldn't just expect it to fall off. It didn't happen overnight, so I couldn't expect it to come off overnight. I was afraid to get on the scale. I, I didn't. I didn't weigh myself every morning because I'd get on the scale and then jump off real fast and say, no, this can't be right. I was well over 300 pounds. I was like almost 320 pounds uh, when I started the journey. And I'm down to uh, 220 pounds right now. I've always made excuses. You just gotta quit making excuses and just do it. Um, life's short and we gotta make the best of it. I'd rather be visiting a gym than visiting a clinic or a doctor's office. And I was able to trade the visits to the doctor's office for visits to the gym and then travel and do things that I couldn't do when I was overweight. And don't listen to the people that say you can't do it because you can. Bill certainly can. Let's head to the gym and show you what he did to get his life back. Bill is actually doing a seated alternate dumbbell curl off of the biceps, the front part of the arm. And as you can see, he has back support and he's doing it on an alternate basis. He's turning as he's coming up, so he's working both heads of the bicep. He's blowing out on exertion so that on the hardest part of the movement, you blow out, you get more energy, you oxygenate, and he's doing, you're doing a great job. There's so many benefits when it comes to strength training. Check this out. Weight training increases bone density, it lowers blood pressure, Remember, weight training develops muscle, and muscle burns twice as many calories as fat does. We lose approximately a half a percentage point of muscle each year after 30 years of age. Weight train every other day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Do it three times a week. Also do two exercises per body part for 10 repetitions and three sets. And don't forget the most important muscle, your heart, cardiovascular training. You need to do it. Pick a piece of equipment that's best for you, whether it's a treadmill, a, a stair machine. I have Bill on a recumbent bicycle. It's back friendly, it's got back support. So if you're recovering from a back injury, it's the way to go. And when you're positioning to get on the bike, make sure you don't hyperextend your, your knee and fully extend the range of motion. A person that's 150 pounds could actually burn in 30 minutes, you know, 150 calories if they're doing 70 revolutions per minute. But there's so many other benefits. Check this out. Do aerobic training after your weight training if you're looking to burn more fat. Aerobic training should be done four to five consecutive days a week. Each session should be 45 to 60 minutes. But if you're just starting, I'll take 10 minutes now, 10 minutes at lunch, and 10 minutes after dinner. The most important thing is to do it. 
Now that we know the importance of weight training and doing cardiovascular training after weights, if we want to lose more body fat, we need to remember to be diligent at the breakfast, lunch, and dinner table. Because believe it or not, 60 to 70% on how you look and how you feel has everything to do with what you put in your mouth. Something to think about. One of the biggest questions I get when people come in for a nutritional counseling, Peter, how many calories should I be having on a daily basis? And then you hear so many people, whether it's on social media, talking about, I'm counting my macros, what exactly are macronutrients? Well, macronutrients are the foods that you eat that really equate to your daily caloric needs, such as protein is the building block to muscle. Some people will have, say, 35% of their total calories coming from protein. The other macronutrient is carbohydrates. A lot of people will go with 45% of their total calories coming from carbs, which is energy food. Then you have fats, essential fatty acids. Many people will stay with 25% of their total calories coming from fat. Let's take a look at some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to calorie counting. Men or women trying to lose excess body fat should keep their macronutrients to 45% carbohydrates, 30% protein, and 25% fat. Women trying to lose weight should consume 13 to 1500 calories per day. Those calories should include no more than 36 to 42 grams of fat. Men trying to lose excess body fat should limit their calories to 1,700 to 2,000 calories a day, including no more than 47 to 55 grams of fat. The bottom line, don't get hung up on just calories. Start counting your macronutrients so that you know what types of foods you're eating. And it's really a numbers game. Once you know that there's nine calories to a gram of fat and four calories to a gram of protein or carbohydrates, all you need is a calculator. Whether you're a diabetic or you're looking to lose excess body fat, most of all the berries when it comes to fruit is low glycemic, it's low sugar. But one of the top antioxidant fruits on the planet is definitely blueberries, hands down. Blueberries are packed with antioxidant phytonutrients called anthocyanins, which neutralize free radical damage to cells that can lead to cataracts, glaucoma, heart disease, and cancer. They also contain tannins, which reduce inflammation in the digestive system. Blueberries also have pterostilbene, a powerful antioxidant which is already known to help fight cancer. The antioxidant may also help lower cholesterol. If you want to protect your brain from damage after a stroke, then you want to pick up as many blueberries as you can. One of the easiest ways to start a wellness program is to just walk. You can do it anywhere, it's free. Once you get your doctor's approval, there's three simple steps I want you to follow. The first is intensity. Walk at 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. The second is frequency. Make sure you're walking four to five sessions a week. And lastly, duration. 45 to 60 minutes each session. A good Peter's Principles tip for your walking program is one step equals about three feet. 1,500 steps equal one mile. In one mile, you'll burn about 100 calories. But now you're into your walking program, don't ever forget the most important piece of equipment, and it's the shoes that you wear.
How do you know when to trade in your shoes? Well, a shoe can lose 50% of its ability to absorb shock in just three months. You should replace running shoes every 500 miles, replace walking shoes every 1,000 miles, and replace aerobic shoes after six months of regular use. I hope this show has motivated you as much as the sunrise is motivating me. See, we get another chance, another day to get it right. For many of us, we never see another sunrise. What I want you to do today is put your foot down and put one foot forward. Take another chance to get it right. Find your reasons why and make a commitment, a covenant where there's no plan B, failure is not an option, and you truly live the life that you were designed to live. And most importantly, believe again.